Welcome back my tribe Simt Lego. Wow, today is the day. Finally here we are. Currently we are at 2.1k subscribers and I always promise you that every time we hit a milestone, I'll be dedicating a video question and answer which is a video Q&A to our new achievement. So, we hit 2000 subscribers last week and in a space of that we have gained about 80 to 100 more subscribers. So, in today's video Q&A, I'm here to answer all of your questions. I sent out a video on the channel asking about what you want me to talk about in your Q&A, what legal challenges you have, what queries you have, and all of that. So, we are now in session. <coughs> Welcome Simply Lego. This is my video Q&A series on the channel. This is a brand new series on the channel. I've done a video Q&A before, but I'm formalizing it for the entertainment of my community, Simply Lego. I'm usual host Terry Kahuma on the channel. I simplify the law creatively. So, let's go to question one. This is from JP Rogava. JP texted me on Instagram, and he said, Hey Terry, I request for a legal insight on copyright law for creatives. So JP, let me just answer your question in a brief. The Copyrights Act protects an expression of an idea. So basically, if you term your question as being a creative, you must have created something and put, put it into material form. Just like this iPhone, just like this hammer, just like this book. So, the Copyrights Act under Section 6 clearly states that ideas are not protected under copyright. Now this takes us back to Section 5. Section 5 gives us an example of what is expressed of ideas expressed in material form. We have pamphlets, computer programs, we have textbooks, we have phones. So the moment you are creative, or someone who considers themselves a creative person, you are a creator in other words. The moment you put your idea in expressive form or in material form, either wooden, you're a carpenter, then that is what is going to be protected under the Copyright and Neighboring Rights Act of 2006. So, I hope I've answered your question, JP. However, I think you also meant to talk about being a content creator also. The laws in Uganda concerning content creation are still coming up, but I would like to tell you about the American laws under which content creation is, because YouTube is, a, is an American company. So the moment you post your video on your channel, if you want those who are beginning YouTube channels, you're already protected under the copyright laws of America. No one can just take your video and put it there. They can, but they're going to copyright slap them. So, JP, your question is? Answered. So question two, this one is by a lady called Praise Gemina Magezi. Her question was, Terry, how possible is it to file a lawsuit against a company or restaurant or institution? So Praise, just to answer your question in a brief, I already did a video on how to file a lawsuit. I did it under the bracket of how to win or succeed in a lawsuit. I gave the entire procedure, we call them prerequisites of filing a lawsuit. Actually, those are pre-trial pre -trial requirements for when you're going to file a lawsuit. So, praise, when you want to file a lawsuit against a company, you need to first understand that a company is its own person. The moment in civil litigation or in civil law, we have it that the moment you have incorporated a company, let's say the company is Innovation Skills Uganda, the moment you have incorporated a company, it becomes its own person. In law, we have what's called legal persona. So a company becomes its own person, just like we have a natural person like me and like you praise. So once you've, once you've incorporated legal skills or once you've incorporated innovation skills Uganda, innovation skills Uganda becomes a person of its own, a legal persona, who can sue or who can be sued. So you attain those titles. So. I will direct you to my video on how to file a lawsuit. Actually, did how to win or succeed in a lawsuit in Uganda. I'll leave the link in the description. Praise for you to basically understand company law. We also have what's called the Companies Act of Uganda 2012. It's also what governs companies, and it's it's what it's basically the manual for companies. Anything company law related, the Companies Act 2012 is what's in charge of it. So, to finalize your point, yes, you can sue a company. You can just make a plaint, not of motion, not of intention to sue, whatever the case and whatever cause of action you have against the company. So praise, I hope I answered your question. Let's move to the next one. So let's go to number three. Terry, how long 
do court processes take on average? This is by Henry Okello. That's a very, very good point, Mr. Henry. So, to answer your question, Mr. Henry, you need to understand that the court process, first of all, there are many different kinds of court processes. There's criminal trials, the civil procedure, civil proceedings, commercial proceedings, we have land transactions, we have different courts, magistrates courts. So that's a very broad question, but to narrow it down, I'd like to explain to you that a court process, how long it takes depends on the facts of the case, depends on the evidence of the case. Is it a trial? Is it an application? We also have applications. Is it an appeal? So it depends on the facts of the case, it depends on the nature of the case, it depends on how persuasive your counsel is, it depends on the judge, it depends on the number of adjournments. So on an average scale, I cannot really give you an average scale because it depends on many factors, just like I've mentioned. The witnesses, the witness statements, which court it's in, is it in the magistrate's court, is it in the high court, supreme court, court of appeal. So. It just depends on the nature of the case and all of these other factors that I've given. So Henry, your question has been answered. So let's go to the next question. When is one considered bankrupt or insolvent, Terry? Oh, this is a very, very good question, you guys. I like the fact that our legal channel is building up and people are getting more confidence to ask these questions. However, you didn't leave your name behind. I just saw unknown. You texted me saying unknown, but let me just answer your question. So Mr. or Mrs. Unknown, you need to understand that bankruptcy and insolvency are one in the same. However, they apply for companies and for persons. So all of these are governed under the Insolvency Act of Uganda 2011. Now, Mr. Unknown or Mrs. Unknown, to answer your question, first of all, when is someone considered bankrupt or insolvent? This is stipulated under Section 3 of the Insolvency Act of Uganda 2012. By the time you move under Section 3 of this Act, it means that you are unable to pay your debts. You're what's called a debtor. So, according to that section, if I'm to paraphrase, our, our debtor is unable to pay back his debts. So, therefore, you move under Section 20 of the Insolvency Act of 2012. That means you're filing a petition for bankruptcy. So, I think I've answered you in a two-in-one, Mr. Unknown. You are considered bankrupt or insolvent when, number one, you are unable to pay your debts under Section 3 and also you file for bankruptcy, you petition for bankruptcy under Section 20 of the Insolvency Act of 2011. I've been wanting to do a video on insolvency but this question is going to open up more doors on the channel. So Mr. Unknown, I hope you are answered. Okay, let's go to question 5. Guys, we're moving very fast. Terry, how big is the team behind Simply Legal? Ah, I didn't expect that question. Okay, first of all, you might be wondering what this hammer contraption is. I do this all for the creativity of Simply Legal. I had this handmade especially for the channel. Guys, I'm so enthusiastic about this channel and I love you guys, my community, my tribe. So to answer your question, this, this is why the, the team on Simply Legal is really big. We think about these ideas, we panel beat them, we question whether this is relevant for the channel, we question all of these stampings, the hammer and everything. So to answer your question, this person was again an unknown, unknown person. Um, the team behind Simply Lego is quite big. We have editors, we have videographers, we have a lot. We have researchers. I do my research. I also have other people who do the research with me, to, um, to be honest. Then we come up with the ideas, we come up with the concept. So it's quite big. The process is so big. So. The team behind Simply Legal is big. For those who want to join that team, if you have expertise in editing, videography, research, please hit the comment section. If you have other creative ideas we can implement for the channel, like these hammers for Simply Legal, please contact me on my social media handles, Terry Kahoma on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and the rest. So, I hope your question has been answered. Okay, so the next question, guys, I don't know why you're you're refusing to put your, your names here, but this is also by unknown. Terry, how do I register a company in Uganda? Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Unknown, I already answered this in a video that I did on how to register a company in Uganda. I did it last year. I'm going to leave a link in the description below, or I'm going to send you to that video that I did. But let me simplify your work. I'll leave the link in the description below. So I hope your question is answered. So question number seven. Guys, we're moving very fast. This question is by Namuju Irene. This is saying, 
Terry, what happens when any of my parents die without leaving a will behind, yet they have property? Tell me what the procedure is. So, Miss Irene, to answer your question, the moment your parents die without leaving a will, they are said to have died intested. In law, we have what's called intested succession. So the moment someone has died without leaving a will behind, that's what's called intested. Then when someone has died while they've left a will, that's tested succession. So to answer your question, the moment your, one of your parents has died or both of them have died without leaving a will behind, you're going to apply for what's called grant of letters of administration. I love the law, man. There's always a solution for everything. The procedure for grant of letters of administration, first of all, number one, if you're not the spouse of the person who has died or the deceased, then you're going to request, you're going to apply for a certificate of no objection for that from the administrator general. Number two, you're going to have to petition to court for a grant of letters of administration. The reason for this is that in any family court, you're going to, you're not going to do anything as a normal lawsuit. You're going to move the court by way of a petition. I did a video on the top grounds for divorce in Uganda and I mentioned in that video that you need to, whenever you're in the family court, you need to petition to court. Basically, let me just simplify it for you. The moment you are in a family court, you have a family issue. In most cases, you're going to move under a petition. That's beside the point. After that, you're going to then present this petition to court and then wait. After that, you're going to file for court fees, still in that same family court, and then your petition is going to be pasted out there in the gazette or in the newspapers. After that, it's going to give any person a chance who wants to object to the grant of letters of administration. And that person can only object by a way of caveat. I have mentioned caveats so and so. I've almost sung a song with a guitar mentioning caveats. So a caveat is an injunction. Any legal process that is taking place, a person can only stop that legal process by way of a caveat, meaning a caveat is an injunction. So the last step is that if no one has objected to the grant of letters of administration to you because your parents have died, then they are going to grant you a letter of administration. So, Irene Namuju, I hope I have answered your question. I hope your parents have not died, but that was just to answer your question. So, hope your question is answered. So, this one is by a gentleman called Peter Bogala. He asked, Terry, my father died recently and was the sole breadwinner of the home. He did not leave a will behind and my family members want to sell the land. What can I do? So, Mr. Peter, this is in relation to what I've just told Irene in the previous question. The moment your father has died and did not leave a will behind and he left land, then you're going to apply for letters of administration. I've already explained the process. However, if you want to stop your family members from selling the land, then you're going to lodge a caveat. I'm, I'm going to put my video of how to lodge a caveat, how to what is a caveat and what's a process in the link. In the, I'll put the link in the description. But let me just give you a brief explanation so it will take you to the video. You need to understand that for you to lodge a caveat under a registrar, you're going to apply to court or a registry or anywhere to get a caveat. You're going to have what's called caveatable interest, meaning that you must have interest in that matter that you're caveating against. So the fact that you are a child of your father, it means that you have equitable interest. You do not have legal interest because you're not the owner of the land title, but you have equitable interest. So if you want to stop your siblings from selling that land, then you're going to lodge a caveat from selling that land. A caveat is going to stop any dealings on that land. So afterwards, I want you to notice that a caveat is not a temporary, it's not a permanent remedy, it's a temporary remedy. So you can lodge a caveat from on that land to stop them from selling that land until you're processing your letters of administration. So, Peter, I hope your question is answered. Okay, let's continue. So, this one asked me that, has Terry, has your YouTube channel affected your life in any way? Well, this is still by an unknown person. Well, my YouTube channel has affected every aspect in my life very positively. I would not say it has affected it in any negative way because I have always been a creative person and I like to put my expressions into material form. I found myself in the law sector and I always ask myself how can I make anything out of this legal sector. So I decided to 
have come up with this YouTube channel. I have other developments which are coming up. I did a video on top secrets. I hope you've been following keenly because I have something up for you up my sleeve. However, this YouTube channel has been a very good expression of my ideas. I've loved working with my team of people. I have loved entertaining you guys. I have loved educating the public. I have loved everything about having a YouTube channel. So, Mr. and Mrs. Unknown. Okay, so this next question is by a gentleman called Mr. Benderana. Benderana Justice. Justice. Uh, thank you for the reply on the tweet. He actually said, thanks Terry, this is a big chance. His question is, if a case is dismissed in court, can someone refile that same case in court? Okay, Justice, just answer your question. No, you cannot refile that same case in court because the moment a judge has tried your case and dismissed, tried your case or dismissed it, a judge's decision is called is what's called functus official, meaning that a judge should not repeat themselves and his or her word is final. The best case you can do once it has been dismissed or it has been uh, a, a ruling or a judgment has been made, then you can just appeal your case to a higher court. I've done a video still on court systems and explain them i'll still put a link in the description so you can only appeal your case you can take it to a higher court because this judge is not going to listen to your case even if you refile it so justice hope i've answered your question okay the next question is by mr aaron kamia he asked me how long does it take to make your videos and to prepare for your videos okay i already answered this on a previous question but let me just make it in brief uh, Mr. Kamiya, it takes me a very long time to make these videos, but I enjoy the process. I don't see it as a chore. I see it as a very beautiful process to express your idea in video form, put it out on YouTube. Uh, I have to first research. I have to contact my team. I have to contact my videographer, who is also my editor, is also my producer, and another team of people who are not disclosed. So I have to see whether he's available and we get a free time in the week because I also have an 8 to 5 job. So I normally shoot in the evenings, unless there's a public holiday or weekends. Then the shooting process, then the editing process, then the thumbnail. Well, I've also not talked about the title, not talked about the thought process in itself. Which video idea am I going to talk to you about these guys? So it's a very, very big process. And uh, yes, that's just basically it. So I hope I've answered your question. Okay, so this is another question. Second last question actually of this video Q&A. Terry, how can one make a petition for climate or environmental change? And this is by Nyakisa Beth. Oh, Nyakisa, I saw your, your text on Twitter. You commented actually on my post that I made on Twitter. So Beth, unfortunately I'm not going to answer your question now. It's very possible to do a petition it's very possible to do a petition concerning plastics because I, I'm a very big environmental enthusiast and I love any, everything to do with the environment, recycling, reuse, and reduce. However, Beth, I cannot answer your question now because I want to do a very, very big video concerning petitions because it's a very huge topic on its own. I promise you I'll do that video just for you and for the people who want to know about petitions. So the procedure is extremely long and I wanted this video Q&A to be as short as possible. However, in the next video q and I'm going to do it and I'll also do a video edition concerning petitions. So your question is not answered, but I'm going to answer it in the next video or Q&A. Okay, so the, this is the second last question. So the person asked, this is by Ferdinand Masiko, he asked me, Terry, have you ever received criticism from other lawyers for hosting the Pioneer Legal YouTube channel in Uganda? Okay, Mr. Ferdinand, uh, first of all, I'd like to tell you that by the time I began this channel, no other person was doing it in Uganda. The legal sector was so conservative, so stronghold on the values that we hold in the legal profession. However, when I began this channel, to be honest, I got a lot of negative feedback and positive the negatives didn't put me down because I'm someone who likes to be daring. I like to push my ideas very far. And I said, you know what, let me just do this YouTube channel. Let me call it Simply Legal. Whoever is going to be negative against it or about it, then that's their, then that's their barrier, that's their funeral. So yes, I've received a lot of criticism from lawyers. I've heard a lot of rumors. This guy does this, this guy does this. He's not good at this, he does this. Why is he doing this? Can't he be banned by law council, by law society? But 
right now i don't mean to brag but i have also begun a chain of other people beginning other innovations in the legal sector and i'm glad that that chain reaction began so yes i've received criticism i don't really mind about the negative i focus on the positive so to answer your question yes whenever you begin anything in life you are going to face both positive and negative the fact that we are now on 2000 plus subscribers the channel is growing very big so Ferdinand I have answered your question okay we are on the final question guys this is by Mr. Karim Tumwebazi he asked me Terry how far do you see your channel growing now that you I can now notice that you are on 2100 subscribers now oh Mr. Tumwebazi thanks for keeping track of the channel at the time of shooting this video we are now on 2.1k subscribers that's 2100 guys i'd like to thank you so much for the channel for the support for the feedback on the channel to answer your question i see the channel growing to 1 million 2 million 10 million 100 million subscribers because we have started a movement simply legal has begun a movement we have begun a chain reaction in the legal sector we have begun groundbreaking work and I see the channel moving very far. Whoever thought we would have reached this far, we are now on 2.1k. And I'm so glad to have reached this far on the channel with you guys. I love you guys so much. This is the final question I'm answering and concluding this video. Thank you so much for hitting the subscribe button. Thank you for helping me reach 2,000 subscribers. This is actually not my channel. Simply Legal is a channel for the community. I help out. I simplify the law for you creatively. I bring out your legal concepts, I bring out your queries, current events, and anything legal based on the channel. Thank you so much for listening to me. Please, I love the fact that you've sent all of your ideas on the channel, all of your video concepts that you've been sending me throughout the years, because now this channel is about one and a half years old. By the end of this year, we should be hitting the 10,000 mark, the 20,000 subscriber mark. Thanks so much for listening to me, guys. I'll continue doing more creative things for you on this channel. Any more ideas you have that we can make the channel more creative, please send me in the comment section. Hit the comment section about anything you'd want me to talk about on the channel. And if there's anything else I've left out in this video concerning all the questions I've answered, I will surely put it in the comment section and the description. So, thank you so much for listening to me, guys. And I'll see you next time. We are officially out of our session.